Hello, I'm Benny from Beambank, and today I'm interviewing Greg, who is an uh, editor at Elite Daily. Greg, hello, thanks a lot for coming to Tech Open Air Berlin. And I mean, I just learned you're 25, which I find extremely impressive. And I was wondering, how did you first get the job at Elite Daily? So before Elite Daily, uh, I always knew that I wanted to be on the editorial side of a publisher. Uh, so specifically, I was freelancing for a content creation company uh, that actually allowed me to work directly with Google at the Google headquarters in New York. So I was creating content uh, with their team for the Google Play app and website in about nine different countries across the world. Uh, which was great experience at that point. I was about 23, 24. Uh, but I ended up meeting the founders of Elite Daily and really want to make a push into digital media, uh, something with more of a culture behind it. I think that was uh, really speaking to people and uh, really had that feedback and engagement. So after meeting with them and just understanding uh, the progress that the website was making, uh, I couldn't help but jump on board. And did you study anything before that, or was it more your professional experience? I think it was a combination of uh, professional experience. I started out, uh, I was an English major, so uh, I was always a writer first, which I think really helped me understand content. Uh, so a combination of the experience that I had uh, working with Google, but also just being a millennial. I think that's the luxury of Elite Daily, is uh, they've had so many people, whether writers, editors, on the business side, the marketing side, that didn't have experience before, uh, but they just bring such an authentic voice and understanding of what millennials want uh, that it just it works out. And uh, you said when you joined, it was about 15 people working for you Light Daily. Was that very much like a bunch of friends when you first joined? Yeah, there were uh, some outside hires, but it was the very early stages. So. Uh, most of those 15, 20 people uh, were the friends that really founded the site uh, and just started bringing in more and more people that really understood the culture and the voice of the website. And when you look at a day of work two years ago when you first joined and the day of work today, how much different is it? Well, I've been with Elite Daily for about a year and a half. Uh, it feels like I've been there for probably half my life because uh, so much has happened in such a little amount of time. Uh, the work days are much different now. I think earlier on it was very much about how do we put content out there? How do we get known? Uh, how do we really establish a voice that readers are going to relate to? And we've grown so much and we've gotten that readership that the day-to-day -day now is much more focused, I think, on the long-term product, uh, how we're going to evolve content, how we want to continue setting trends, uh, and things like video as well. It's going to be big for us. And when you publish a story now, do you already know very well if it's going to be successful or not? I think the short answer is yes. Uh, I think we definitely have a strong understanding of what's going to resonate with our audience. But at the same time, we're constantly experimenting. So we're putting out a lot of new content that we don't know how it's, it's going to do. Uh, and I think that's the most exciting part, is not just sticking to the foundation and sticking to the content and processes that got us to where we are, but really experimenting and evolving as much as we can. And you said now you want to experiment with also writing longer features. Do you feel that there are particular topics which you should cover, which are not getting the coverage they should, which are particularly interesting to your readers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm always interested in personal narratives uh, more than anything, just because there's so many subjects that could be covered, so many subjects that we speak about in our everyday life uh, that aren't written about uh, in an honest way or completely honest way. I think that's what's most interesting about long form and personal narratives, uh, especially on Elite Daily, is they're coming from a voice that's you know, just, just like someone uh, that's similar to you. They're writing in a casual tone. Uh, they're writing about their personal experiences. And I think uh, if you're writing with that type of authenticity, uh, the topics are really endless. And do you feel there is a kind of difference between this new journalism in the US and in Europe? Or is that very hard to say? 
Uh, it's hard to say. Um, just really starting to explore, I think, European media a little bit more. Um, but I think at its core, uh, it's you know the same foundations are going to make a publisher successful. Uh, and for us, we again just really rely on authenticity, mm -hmm. um, sticking true to uh, content that we know does well, and trying to evolve in a more seamless way. And do you see through your data that American millennials are interested in other topics than European millennials or that they engage more or less with certain kind of articles? Yeah, I think for us, uh, we really focus on content that's going to identify a certain group of people or certain characteristics or personality traits, things like that. So. The, the great thing is it really doesn't matter where you're from. We've had engagement from all over the world about different topics. Uh, something else that we're moving into now is uh, geographical uh, specific content. So obviously if we write a piece about you know, what it's like to grow up in Australia or London, we're not going to get that same engagement with American audiences. So it would be fair to say that you're really a global media company which only now gets a little bit more local. Yeah, I think that's that's very fair to say. Uh, our readership since the start has always been global, uh, majority in the U.S., but uh, readers across Europe, Asia, pretty much every continent. And I, I mean, I don't know where your office is, if it's in Manhattan or Brooklyn, but would you say that makes a difference for a company in New York, where it is in New York, since it's such a big city and probably plays a part mm -hmm. where exactly it's located, or you feel that is not... Yeah, no, that, that's a really interesting question. Uh, I've never given that much thought, uh, but something that I'm definitely going to think about. Now I'm just going through my head of where all these companies are located. Uh, I think just being in New York is going to be helpful for a media company uh, regardless, just because you're right in the heart of it. Uh, no matter where you are in New York City, uh, an area has its own personality, uh, which you can definitely thrive from. But I think more than anything is really what happens within those four walls and the culture that you create within your company. And speaking about personality, do you feel that this festival, Tech Open Air Berlin, has a certain kind of personality? Do you see things here that you particularly like? Yeah, I, I love the open format of it. I think that's what really separates from other conferences that I've personally been to. Uh, there's just so much more engagement because there's really the freedom to roam around and, and pick and choose what speaker you want to hear, what music you want to listen to, uh, down to you know what food you want to eat. Uh, and I think it just really helps uh, keep people focused on uh, having to pick what they're interested in, what they want to hear, and in turn people are paying a lot more attention, uh, attention asking great questions, uh, and really engaging. Greg, thanks a lot. Thank you.